Hello friends, good morning and welcome to this beautiful day, our day. And to this Facebook Live Brokers, greetings from me to you, wherever you are. And um, I hope you're having a swell of time where you are. It's a great day. I want you to know that it's a good day for you. It's not a bad day. There's nothing you're facing or nothing around you that is greater than your life. Your life is so precious. Leave it free don't live in bondage no more i'm calling you to have fun in life life is good and life supposed to be fun for you so let's keep this ball rolling i want to share with us what i titled no movement no change and uh, some of you that has been following my post what i'm posting let me start by sharing some of them so i woke up today I woke up today and I saw this. Okay, this is 2 p.m. <sighs> so when I woke up today, yeah, my first uh, post was, if you are serving the Almighty God, then why are you working or borrowing or begging or stealing money from mortal men? Don't you believe the Bible where Jesus made money from the sea to pay his tax bill according to Matthew chapter 17 verse 27 when I was following Edahosa Archbishop Benson Edahosa he's late now and he says something he said when you are talking about almighty God he said just think about that word almighty I think many people that worship God today fail to focus on that word, although they use it. My God is almighty. My God can do all things. Do you know the weight of that word? When you say your God is almighty, he can do all things, you don't supposed to suffer. You don't supposed to be in need. In fact, you don't supposed to be in need and cry to him to do anything. He is almighty. He can prevent that need from coming to you. As usual, you may believe the lies of religion that, oh, it's your sin, or you didn't listen, or this. He's almighty. My friend, God is almighty. The God they gave to us, God of the Bible, God of Quran, God of Torah, they say he's almighty. He can do all things. You see the stories of all the things they say he has done. He parted the Red Sea. He fed them with manna from heaven. He sent his son, who also fed 5,000 people with you see, uh, five, five, uh, five loaves of bread and the three fish. His son pay his tax bill from the sea. He did not borrow money from people. He did not take tithes and offering from people to pay his bill. He pay his bill from the money he asked Peter to go and make from the sea, not from the people. So when you are God is almighty, you don't supposed to ask anybody for financial assistance, for any type of assistance. You don't supposed to go to hospital. You don't supposed to say you're lacking any good thing. You, you quote it and you, you always recite it. One of the portions of the Bible, they indoctrinated us to, uh, to recite. As a child, I know Psalm 23 off head. I don't need any Bible to research Psalm 23 until tomorrow. It is there, rested in my mind. Because from childhood, I, I was reciting it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down on green pastures. He restores my soul. He lead me on green pain. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, like, we read it like nothing. Especially those of us that grow up in Anglican. That's one of the things you might, like when you go to APA, which they call maybe children ministry now, that's where you, you know, they want you to know the Bible. Imagine children that don't know nothing, but they know the Bible. If not for the hunger, for knowledge of the truth, I will still remain a Christian, believing all the lies in the Bible. It's a lie. If Jesus pay his, his task bill, bill from the sea, it's supposed to continue today. In fact, it's saying you can do greater than that. In other words, you may not need to go to the sea. You just stay in your house and command fish to jump from sea into your house and vomit money and go back. 
Because Jesus said you can do greater. They tell you Jesus walk on the water. Impossible. Okay, you can also walk. So if your God is almighty, why are you suffering? You'll find many reasons which they already prepared and taught you to justify your lack of anything when you, your father is almighty, when your father is rich. You go into a church where your pastor believed that oh, we are serving a rich God and he's flying with jet. You are not. He's driving expensive cars, new chassis, not old, not used, not maybe, you know, the, um, they call it in America, certified one by dealers. No, this one is brand new car. He's driving and they have more than one. And you, you believe we are serving that, the God of that pastor. Your God is almighty. So why are you not? If that God is your father, he's almighty, you're also almighty. If Jesus says he's almighty, all right, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, Jesus says he's almighty, not almighty God, but almighty. So he's the almighty son of the almighty God. You're also supposed to be an almighty child of almighty God. That's how it's supposed to be. You don't supposed to be lesser than God. No, you don't supposed to. You are not lesser than your father. You are not. Or if you have earthly father, of course. Your biological father you are, you are, is the same human with you. Whatever you suffer, he can suffer it. Whatever you enjoy, he can enjoy it. That's what makes both of you one. So think about it. And before you come to insult me because of I'm saying things about God, I have not even started saying things about you personally, but I'm saying things about God and all the lies they told us about God that they made us to believe that. Our people, they turn us into morons. They turn us into stupid people. They turn us into gullible people that they, we, we, we dare not question their teachings, their practice. Why, 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 why are we still uh, maybe believing in that nonsense? So if I am to be insulted, I must first value your opinion. Your opinion about me and about my post is crap to me. Before I started posting them, do you think maybe your God was the one that gave them to me to post? Or you think Satan gave them to me to post? No, I have power over God and over Satan. Both of them cannot do anything to me. They cannot do any good or evil to me. You know why? Because they does not exist. Imaginary being cannot control is is existing being like me. No way. They cannot. They cannot. So I I made all those um, posts because I know. But what people will say, what they will react, how they will react. People that love the truth will cherish it and do their own research. I don't have followers. I, some people are you know, monitoring my post to know how many likes and comments I get. If I'm counting how many likes and comments I get, I will stop posting, especially anything about God. I will start posting things about sex about marriage, which you know I do also. I have marriage group where I post such things. I know what people will like. I will start posting prayers, prophecies. You will be shouting amen, commenting amen. Amen, amen, amen. That's nonsense. I don't want your amen. I don't want your like. I don't want your comment. All I want is for you to wake up. I'm telling you the truth. If I want comments, if I want um, likes, I get the money to be posting my post with Facebook. They will be posting my post and I'll be getting likes and comments and all that. And I'll also be raising money. I, I know I can raise money on Facebook. I'm telling you I'm doing a running social program for poor people or for this, for that. I'm going to Nigeria. I'm going to Africa to do so, so thing. Somebody must be touched. And the person we believe the Holy Spirit that touched him is not. I've donated to somebody on Facebook also. Just the person posted it and he didn't tell me anything. I saw it. I've been enjoying his post. So I, I, I donated. The person don't know me today. I bet I donated. So it's not a big deal. If I'm really looking for all this cheap popularity you think everyone is looking for, I won't be coming here talking what I'm talking. People that talk as I talk don't have followers. People that talk as I talk don't have supporters because they are not after your money. They are not after your purse. They are not after your wallet. They are after you knowing the truth and thinking for yourself. Because when you know the truth, I know the truth. We won't be burdened to one another. All of us will live free. 
But you see how burdensome everybody has become today. Everybody, you know, except a few that know the truth already. So I also make a you know, post about my parents being my gods. Because people always ask, who, who, who created you? Who, do, who created you? I say, my parents bombed me. They say, who, who, who created your parents? I say, I just tell you my parents gave back to me. The same way their parents gave back to them. We were not created. My, the gods, that, one God cannot create anyone. That's what, what, what I want to share also. One God cannot create anyone. No God. One God did not create you. But religion of monotheism taught you that one God created all of us. It's not true. Even the Bible. I can use the Bible right now to prove to you that one God did not create you. According to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. What does he say? What, what does he say? He said, God said, let us make man in our own image. Our image, I mean. So it's like a, a man meeting a woman and say, I want to marry you. I want so for us to have babies. That's what it means. So when you believe there is one God, it's a lie. Even the Bible itself proves there is no one God. That's why when they made that one God, they said, you shall have no other God beside me. How can you reproduce without another God? God cannot reproduce without goddess. Every God has a goddess. A goddess cannot reproduce without God. So also that argument about women came first. The goddess gave back to us. That's nonsense. Male and female we are. Let us stop all this division. And I, I, I'm surprised when I see people that say they are woke now. Or they are working. And they still argue, you know, a woman we came from. True woman. Nonsense. Somebody put that thing into a woman before she brought it. And they are equal. We are equal. I asked my co-worker today. I said, Jesus said, I and my father are one, and whoever has seen me has seen the father. So why Jesus never said, I and my mother are one? Whoever has seen me has seen my mother. So the guy started arguing like, you know, you are the, you are the child of your father. You are the child of your father. It's true, father. I say, no, I'm not only the child of my father. I'm also the child of my mother. My father had the seed, injected it in my mother, and my mother carried that seed to Tam and delivered me. That's how I came forth. So we belong. It, it happened when I went for my bride price. My tribe, women and mothers are not allowed to come when they are talking about their daughter's marriage. I say, no, I don't believe in that nonsense. How can a woman carry his, his child? For nine months and get back to her, take care of her, then time for her to get married. It's only men that will be talking about that. They will ask the woman, go there, maybe go stay with your daughter or go be preparing something or waiting until we call you. I say, no, she has to stay here. She's, too, she's dead. You know, many people will be running their mouth, maybe just based on what they see. When I say certain things, certain things I say is either I have done it. Or I am doing it, or I can do it. I can never ask you to do what I cannot do, or what I have not done, or what I'm not doing. So I, I say no, because the father and the mother gave birth to this. They said, Let us make man in our image. It's not three, it's two. God and the goddess. If you for those that believe in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said. Let us, it's like a man talking to his wife, let us make children. Then they have sense to make children. It is not more than anything from the earth to make any crap. No. For those that believe in that story of Genesis, which is also a fairy tale, it's not a true story. All right? So it takes a, a man and a woman to create another man and woman in their own image after their life. And that's why I use the picture of my father and mother and my siblings. The, that, that, that is the God. My father is the God. My mother is the, is the goddess. Say, see my sister there? She is the Im their image and likeness. You see my younger brother there? He also is their image and likeness. That is how it, that's how it is. You cannot refute what I just said. You cannot say it's not true. You cannot say that. That's why our ancestors, Asian people, they have gods and goddesses. 
my town where I came from, we believe that Uchu is the female and the Diawo is the male. It's natural. Gender, you cannot have one gender and you cannot reproduce by one gender. You have two. It's a principle of two, male and female. Then a homosexual also attacked me on uh, Google. He called me bigot because I said that uh, the, uh, I shared a post that somebody has made about homosexual. That how the some people are afraid of the, the uh, homosexual um, agenda. So he started calling me bigot. So I I I know maybe he don't believe in God, but he believe in homosexuality. So I was avoiding him, avoiding him. But time come because I know when to speak to a fool and when not to speak to a fool. So I said, okay, I call him Fagot. Fagot, even if you don't care about what I'm saying, look at your shoes. Your shoes, learn from your shoes. You can't wear left to left shoes or right to right shoes. You wear left and right. It's a principle of two. You can nobody push on left to left with this one size shoe on both legs. You can't do that. It's common sense. There is left and right, male and female. It's two. I, and then he, he keeps saying, I think I keep calling him idiot and all that. Name. I say, listen, if if since you, you can fuck yourself, since you believe in that, fuck yourself and fuck your cat and rat or, or dog. So why, why are you making it big? It's simple. It's a natural thing. It's male and female. And that's how we, we grow. So real gods that exist are your parents. And when you get married and give back to other people, also you are God. If you're not get, if you don't marry, you're just a God yourself because you have the potential to reproduce. You can reproduce whether you want or not. I mean, you, if you want or not. Not everybody must give back, but all of us we have that potential to give back. So, and there are gods like that. So, all this issue, nobody can come now. Still, uh, anybody that's still asking me. Who created you? Maybe that person is new. I always point them to their parents who gave birth to you. How did they come? That's what matters. Why are you believing the lie they told you that God created you in his own image and likeness many years ago and you still believe it? If God created man, first man and woman out of the ground, he will still continue doing that today. So, but the religion taught you that to keep you, you know, in that lie, in their lies, we are male, the men among us are gods, the women among us are goddesses. We are the ones that exist. Any other god they tell you you worship, check them. You can never see them. And also, my people, the Bible and the people they believe that uh, uh, in the time past. God, this God that I've been talking about is invisible. So whether it's one God or many gods, all of them are invisible. They are imaginary. No one has seen them. No one has seen them. The only God that people have seen are their parents, their elders that have gone ahead of them. And our ancestors weren't worshipping them. They were honoring them. Just as Roman Catholic people uh, um, made the status of Mary and they argue uh, against those that are saying they are worshipping him. Of, of course, they are worshipping Mary. When you pray into Mary, you are worshipping her. And Mary never existed. But they gave it to you. But you are accusing your ancestors of, ancestors of worshipping idols, which they never worship because they made the status of their, uh, uh, of their, of their uh, ancestors. They never worshipped them. They were honoring them like the heroes. And they weren't met, making the images of all of them. No, it were the heroes among them. Just as people also praise uh, inventors today. That's how our ancestors were living. But they managed to deceive us to believe the lies. And that's why Africans don't consider their ancestors anymore. They consider fictional characters. They give to us in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah, and any other religion. We have to wake up and consider our, our ancestors. If you believe that God exists or gods exist also, you should know that that God, that God or gods also spoke to our ancestors in many different ways. So, are you, uh, uh, have you ever take time to know what God said to your ancestors? We don't. You know why we don't? 
because we departed from the way of our ancestors first they destroyed the books of our ancestors when they destroyed the library of uh, uh, alexandra right they, they destroyed their books but our ancestors were recording their stuff only on books or in books they have images they have artifacts when they make it when you when, when you go to your village for those of you i don't know if they have replaced that or forgot that uh, one foolish pastor burned um was it last year or last two years when you go to your village there's this um like uh, my village have one i think every village have it but there's one that the whole town have and is in the center of the town or wherever they consider to be the center place which is the it's like alarm clock like in america each city is or will i say each township or each town they have this big uh, clock or bell that can ring or that can sound alarm in the time of crisis or emergency right so and that's what that equal serve in our uh, among our people before white men came we were using alder it's a local gong it's a wooden big wooden gong that when they sound it and our elders know the meaning of each sound and when they sound they know whether it's meeting or whether it's war they know all that but you see some if you go to it you will see some things they carve on it some of them you see snake or you see like a human head and all that there are many things they carve on that uh, on, on the body and some people know when they look at those things carved they can tell you what they are they can tell you a lot of a lot of things though our um, uh, ancestors after slavery they weren't writing books, but they continue carving things. And that's when when they when you see that thing they carve, they can tell you a lot of stories about them. And they also use animals to narrate many stories or many events that happen. Yes. So that's why you see sometimes they will tell you maybe like in a way they don't eat a we um, our people we don't eat uh, the queen's snake you know other some people also do that but some people said we are worshiping them or so but the reason why we believe that is because what our oppressors taught us against our ancestors is because of the Bible and Christian faith and Christian teachings that make me if I don't like the sight of snake. I don't like it, no matter the name of the snake. If I see it, I want to kill it because I don't want to continue seeing it. It has to disappear from my sight. Whether it's online or offline, I don't... Because, but I'm trying sometimes, I say, let me fix my eyes on it and see if I will defeat that feeling. I don't, I, I, I don't have... I don't, I, don't, I don't like seeing it. So, it, it, it is because of what they taught us. The God you are serving today, you don't know that God. And the God our ancestors served, they said they served, they didn't know that God. See what befell our ancestors. The same thing is befalling us today. You see how Africans are suffering. Yet they say they believe in God, that God cannot give them solution for, to their problem. The same thing that happened to our ancestors, because it's not any God that invaded and enslaved our ancestors. It's not any people sent by any God. No, it is people that, that, that planned and executed it, which is what Africans are supposed to be doing today. But they're still doing like their ancestors, believing in imaginary God that cannot put food on their table, that cannot help them. They achieve great, great things that are tribute to a, a deity. They say that's the one that gave them inspiration. That's the one that protected them. That's the one that do this. No! They are not doing all that. You said there is higher power. That higher power is your fellow human being. It's not any deity anywhere. It's because you don't understand it and because you think you can't have it. Since you can't have it, no other person can have it. You don't know the powers that human being possesses. Look at this iPhone. Somebody invented it, not by any god, not by any deity. It's a fellow, your fellow human being. He began to do some experiment. That thought came into him and made all of us, we have potential to do something. Not to worship anyone that invented anything or did anything. We're not supposed to be doing that, my people. Consider your ancestors. If you believe God spoke to those that wrote the Bible. 
If you believe that God spoke to those that are coming to take your money in the name of God or Jesus, Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, remember, they learned that from your ancestors. God also spoke to your ancestors. You have to consider your ancestors. Wake up or you continue thinking. You have to wake up and think or you continue thinking. When will our thinkingness end? Also, I share this uh, post about a, 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 a fool from my own town. He, he shared my picture on Facebook and he thought I'm the type that we go, no, I block him. Then I made the post to spread it everywhere online, both everywhere on Facebook. Let people read it. This person said for record, for record purposes, please, nobody should uh, share link, share or link me to this man's groups or videos <laughs> and pages, uh, Shadrach Ezebub. I have since exited uh, all his groups and my reasons is very simple. I do not share his beliefs and faith. Can they respect this post? Thank you. Your own brother hating you because of foreign religion. And I said this, the holy religion, the holy books, holy religions taught Africans to hate and kill their brethren for faith and beliefs. According to my tribe, that guy is my noche. My father's mother came from his village. I partially grew up in that village, Achalumuchu. Till today, anytime I, I visit Africa, I go to that village. Because my mother's uh, elder sister is also married in that, uh, to that village. So I have many, many experiences, many connections to that village. But this fool, because maybe he's a Roman Catholic church member, and also he believed in God, Jesus Christ. He never said this when I was preaching Jesus Christ or God. But he's, he's now decided to hate me, his own brother, because of what he called belief and faith which I don't have anymore. I don't have faith and beliefs. I don't. I have knowledge of truth and facts. That's all I seek for. I don't have any belief. I don't have any faith. Faith is fake. Belief is misleading. I don't have them. If whatever you say you want to show me, you have to show me with facts. I don't believe for believing sake. I don't follow things by faith. I was taunting my co-workers. I said, okay, you are doing your work. You can't do it by faith. You can't come to work by faith. But they tell you with God, all things are possible. And to them that believe, all things are possible. It's not true. It's a lie. It's only in religion to make us remain in bondage. He hated me because of what he said is my faith and beliefs. Imagine that. Your own brother your own relation, your own people hating you because of... I, I opened a, a, a group, Umuchu Alansa Worldwide. We know what, make, what scattered that group, but I'm still maintaining that group, still posting because I know in secret they are reading it. Of course I know. So sometimes they can't take it, they come and comment. Boom. I hammer them. Either I, I remove them from the group or they go back to their corner, remain in corner. Because I know how to punish people with the truth. Of course. I know how to do that. I will be doing that. You can't stop me. Okay. It's no longer the time. Maybe you have one church in your town. Everybody goes there. So you are you are scared of maybe let them not excommunicate you. Let them not do the excuse me. Facebook. Online. Even if they close Facebook today, there's another one. I'm not only on Facebook, I'm on other social media. He hated me because that's what Jesus commanded in the Bible. Luke chapter 14 verse 26, Jesus said that if you don't hate your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters, your children, you are, you are, and yourself, he said you are not worthy to be his disciple. What type of nonsense is that? Any religion that makes you to hate, you, have no, you can try to defend it. No, you don't mean hate. That's what hate is hate. Whether you say it's spiritual or anything, hate is hate. And religion is hate. Religion taught us hate. Religion taught us murder. Religion taught us evil. 
Without religion, none of us will know what is evil or doing evil. We will not be doing any evil. We will not be thinking it. It's religion that created evil and show us how to do it and how to punish whoever do, do, do it. We have to consider ourselves and our ancestors, my people. We have to wake up. Why are we fighting and killing each other because of the foreign religion? This idiot that maybe before this, uh, he, he started hating me because of this belief and faith, he would have said, oh, my brother, maybe when we meet. But today, if we meet face to face, he may hide or he may try to avoid me. Because if we see face to face, the glory that covers me will shut him up. Yes, I have that glory. I'm, I never shy away from anyone, no matter their size, no matter their status. If we appear face to face, he will know that I am more than he think. That I used to tell people, I say, they say, I, will do. I say, if they ask you to come and beat me, and you come and see me, will you still have the nerve to beat me? Yeah, you can. I'm not bragging about that. It's a natural thing with me. Because I had not, I'm not planning any evil against anyone. And you say you're coming against me? You can't harm me when I have not planned to harm you. You can't. We need to wake up my people and do the right thing. And also this elder that I heard, um, Ife Dibo, you see, he died at age 75. He's still a young man, as young as my father also. It's a natural thing. Death is not a bad thing. And I wish his family well. Just as I wish everyone well. But we have to prepare for death. That's the thing we are not prepared for. Many, of, many people are preparing for heaven, for paradise. But they never prepare for death. So if death happens in their family, either they usually start uh, making money and they start uh, living life like, oh, because somebody died in my family, my life is finished. Excuse me? You're supposed to be prepared. Especially you that believe in heaven. If you believe you are going to heaven, if you believe in God, why are you afraid of dying? Why are you saying you don't premature death is not your portion? Anyone that wants you to die this year will die. Excuse me. You say you're going to heaven. You believe in paradise. So you're supposed to die. You can't go to heaven without dying. You can't see. You say no man can see God. You want to see God, he say you should die. So what are you still in this, doing in this world? Why are you still on Facebook posting or arguing? You believe in going to heaven. Die and go to heaven. Why are you taking medication or medicine when you seek? Die and go to heaven if you believe. But you won't do that because you don't know what you are doing. And that's why I'm asking you. Of course, some people will die around you this year. You may die also this year. But... Are you prepared to take it when somebody dies? Your father, your mother, your, your uncle, your cousin, anyone. Death is not a bad thing. Religion taught us that death is bad. That's why they tell you, Jesus died for your sin. You say, oh, if Jesus died for my sin, oh man, I love him, I love him. Jesus did not die for your sin. Jesus did not die for your sin. No one can die for your sin because you have no sin. You are a human being. Any sin that exists was created, manufactured by your religion. And when you belong to that religion, you become a sinner. And many of us from childhood, we are sinners. Because our parents were born, who belong to that religion. So they also indoctrinated us. So we believe, oh, we are sinners, we are what is. Oh, almighty God, I shall have mercy on me. Every day you're crying for mercy. Every day you're crying for grace. Every day you're crying for forgiveness. Nonsense. Stop that. Elder Fred the boy is gone, but he's coming back. Although he's an elder in Pentecostal church, but reincarnation will happen. He will come back. He's a grandfather, so maybe the next newborn that will come in his family, he will come back through that. But religion taught us against that. Foreign religion taught us against that, but it's true. Which every religion in the world agree. But they remove it from the Bible. It was in the Bible originally, but they remove it. But they can't finish removing it. <laughs> because even some of them still say, Jesus said that uh, John came, what? In the spirit and the power of Elijah. Reincarnation. <laughs> Elijah came back. <laughs> Jesus said, when you cast out evil spirit, he said, he'll do what he do. He, he does what? He goes about looking for where to enter again. <laughs> All right? It's in your Bible. 
but you, you are afraid of death. I'm not afraid of death. What if I die tonight? After this, or I'm speaking right now, I drop dead. Well, I lose nothing. I'm no longer afraid of death. No. So any God you believe in or worship is invisible. It's imaginary. And I shared this. I got it from a Google group. This guy shared. He said, all gods share the same four traits in common. There's four common characteristics of gods. No matter whether you believe in one god or many gods, they share the same four traits. Number one is silence. All of them are silence. Have you heard from your God? No way. They tell you when you read the Bible, you heard your God. Or uh, maybe when you hear a voice. Which God? The God you have not seen and the God you cannot see. That's the God you hearing his voice. No, you are hallucinating. And you need to go and you need, you need to go and see a psychiatric <laughs> a psychiatry. The voice you're supposed to hear is the, either your own voice, audibly or uh, or within, or other people's voice. All of us we hear voices, but what voice are you hearing? Why are you ascribing certain voice to an imaginary God who is silent? So every God, they are silent. They cannot talk. It's people talking for them. The Lord says, as you say, as you tell you, no, let the Lord speak for himself. Why is the Lord speaking through you? Let him speak for himself if he exists. Also, number two, all gods are invisible. They share invisibility. No one that believes in God has seen God. No one. No, no. The only God that exists is the one you know, and that's your fellow human being. But the God you don't see does not exist. It's invisible. It's invisible because it's imaginary. Somebody make up that God and sold it to, the, to people and some buy, bought it, some don't. Some create their own God also. Also, all the gods, they share in action. Where is your God in your time of need? Your God cannot act. Your God cannot do nothing. It is the same thing that happened in your Bible, the story they tell you about the Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Your God is Baal because he has no action. He cannot, he's silence. He's invisible. They pray, they pray, they cut themselves. Baal did not show up. Baal, Baal, answer us. He did not show up. But they lie to you. They say, Elijah, pray, fire came down from heaven. Nonsense. You see one priest, that one pastor that what uh, is he priest, Roman Catholic priest, uh, yeah, that wanted, or uh, one pastor also in the church. He said, one pastor in the church, either in, the, in one country in Africa. So there is this thing that lit fire after some time. So, you know, they hide it under something they gathered. And he said, we pray, fire will come, he pray, pray, that thing, cut fire, explode. It's made up. If Elijah pray and fire fall from, fell from down from heaven and consume sacrifice, many pastors will be doing it today. Have you seen any pastor that prayed and fire came down? Oh, they are telling you, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire, we consume your enemies. Holy Ghost fire, we consume anybody that wants you to die this year. Holy Ghost fire, we consume anyone that is holding your destiny. Nonsense. Nobody is holding your destiny. Nobody is holding your destiny. You are the one holding your destiny if you believe in, in destiny. Some people still believe, oh, some people are controlling their life from uh, Africa. They are living in America or they are living in London, in, in Europe or in Asia. You still believe somebody in your village is working against you. Where was that person when you cross all those oceans or those seas to be in abroad? Hmm? Uh, Abaji, you work on love it. So where was that God? That God is inactive, inactive. Or oh, where was that person, that charm? They said, oh, they, they went somewhere and get it against you. They cannot work against you if you know the truth. They can only work against you when you have fear. The torment, the suffering you're having is because you have fear. Fear brings torment. Fear can give you sleepless night. Fear can make you a slave for life. That's what fear does. And all the people that are saying they believe in Jesus Christ, they, live in, they believe in Jesus out of fear. Because they tell them, if you don't believe in Jesus, you are condemned. You're going to hellfire. 
But do you know other people that believe in other religion also said if you don't believe in their own doctrines and command uh, and uh, and um, and the religions, you are going to their own hellfire also. I'm not going to any hellfire. Nobody can drag me to any hellfire, and no hellfire exists. The only hellfire that exists is the one that you can see. But there's no hellfire where any God is throwing any people. You believe God will throw people in hellfire, but God cannot stop those people that are coming to take your life or coming to take your properties. But you believe when we throw people inside hellfire. Why? Because you have fear. You have that lies. You believe that lies from those religions you are in. So the fourth trace of every uh, God is this. A clear human origin. Every God is man-made. God did not create any man. Man created God. You hear me? God did not create any man. Man created God. In the beginning, man created God. A man created God in his own image, after his likeness. Why people created that God in their own image and after their likeness? That's why it's white God, white Jesus. And some black people are saying, uh, even some white people say, no, according to the Bible, Jesus is black. They already saw that lie of white God and white Jesus. That is the God they created in their own image and likeness. And the heaven and the earth they are talking about is their land, is the heaven. Africa is the earth. And the earth, that's where you see hellfire. They tell you hellfire is under. It's not above. Heaven is above. <laughs> they lie to us. And you still see Africans believe they are going to heaven. No. If you are not living in Africa, but you are not living in America or, you know, all these developed countries, you are living in heaven. Of course. Africa is not heaven. Africa is hell. And that's why Africans want to run away from Africa. Yes. Even those that are rich in Africa, they don't like Africa. They only like uh, the, the moment they are making the money, but they know when maybe like see the, the time is hard or something, they want to go abroad. So you should uh, know that religious books would serve humanity for better if they had been left as trees. Of course, we benefit from the trees than from religious books. Trees can give you shadow. Trees can give you life. Trees can heal you. Tree, trees can do you a lot of good. You can build a house with trees. But what have you done with your religious book? Killing each other. Hating each other. Cursing each other. In the name of religion. It's time for people to wake up and get angry against lies. Stop letting people using God to intimidate you, using God to use your properties, using God to, 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 to rob you. Stop letting people using God. If that God exists, let that God call himself. If God wants your land, let him come to you himself. Not they tell you, God say you should give me the land, pray over it. Then you went to sleep. You stay hearing a voice. You, that's the voice of the person you, you the voice you hear in the voice of the person that tell you God wants you to give you. You know, it's when they want to raise money, they say, "Let us pray." I want you to ask the Lord. Let the, and, and no, so they not ask the Lord. They will ask you to, you know, let us pray. You close your eyes. You say, "The Lord, let, whatever amount, how much, whatever amount the Lord wants you to give, in your heart, bring it." And you close your eyes. You begin to imagine. What are you imagining? How much can I give? Uh, I have $40, $40 in my house or in my pocket. Okay, I will go. Okay, okay. Let, I can go. I go, I can fast. Let me just give them the forty dollar. Maybe somebody will give me ride to home. So tomorrow, you know, I will still eat. I have food in my house. Uh, you give to them. You say God has spoken to you. No, it's no God spoke to you. It's a mind game. They play with your mentality and they got you. And because you went there, that, that, that ocean, that river, we never drown somebody that have not gone there. You can't stay in your house and the ocean come there and drown you. No way. You have to, you have to see your leg first. You step in there, yes, you're gone. 
Stop letting them, stop letting them praying over your life, praying over your family, praying over the, many families are poor in Africa today because their parents take the resources they're supposed to use to support their children and give it to one stupid pastor, one stupid criminal called priest or pastor. See them getting richer. At the end of the year, they bring a bag of rice and oil and share you. You say they are doing good. At least they give us something. Shut up. What have you been giving them from January to December? Do you take record of how much you have given as tithes and offering? Have you done that? Now, this is January. You will start again. You will continue again. Parents still paying for church dues for their children, even children that are abroad. And some of those children are di have died and gone. And they will not go and say, okay, my son died, though, and they can't see him again. Give me the money back. No payback, because they say you give it to God. Which God? You believe you give him. That's why I made that post. I said, is 8 a.m. not better than your God? Of course, 8 a.m. machine is better than any God. Because when you put money in a bank, you can go to the 8 a.m. machine and withdraw it. But you have been giving to church. You can, there, there's no withdrawal. It's only deposit, 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 deposit. You have to go and work and still making more money. And they tell you, oh, it's God blessing you. Which blessing? If God exists, give your money to God. Bank exists, you give your money to the bank. Then you go to the ATM and withdraw it. So if you give your money to God, you're supposed to withdraw it from God. Especially when God said he has his servants, right? Okay, so he's supposed to give it to you through his servants. Yeah, my dear, all of us, all of us, like my loved ones are still victims, my parents, my siblings, they still believe in that nonsense, they still go to church, but the same way I'm talking to people, I'm talking to my family members also, we have to wake up, the money you will use to train your children, you are giving it to church, because you believe miracle will happen, God will do better things, greater things for me, H -E -H -E -H -E -Kama. you know, tomorrow will be better, you go better, Somebody commented it on my post <laughs> when I made a post about, um, you know, children, like children in, a, in abroad and the children in Africa, right? Children in Africa, we keep saying it go better, it go better. Children in America don't say that nonsense. It go better for what? Children in America don't pray, oh God, give us food today. Bless my parents, brother. No, they don't pray that nonsense. It's in poor countries like a uh, poor continent, Africa. You still see children praying that. And you see some parents, they say, say to their, ch uh, to their children, a child of even five years, that know any child that know how to say something, they will say, lead us in prayer. He say, Father, I want to pray for daddy and mommy. Bless them as they go. I know he says, the child will say anything that comes in his mind, whatever he's been hearing from his parents, and they will say, Amen. Guess what? The parents will start saying, the, the hand of God is upon this, our child. Yeah, God is, uh, you know, the way he pray, and the child, the child will go to church and see how pastor preach also. You will see the child come home and use his mother's hairbrush and begin to preach. They say, I think the hand of God is upon that child. He must be a pastor or priest. But the smart people, smart people among our people, Igbo people, are Roman Catholic people also. They are smart. That's why they are richer than other people in when it comes to religion. Roman Catholic people are richer than Anglicans because Anglicans will have guilt to do some certain business. But Roman, a good Roman Catholic person will kill somebody and make money and know he will go and confess again, you know. Fatherly, he says, confession. So they go to confession. They know they will commit the sin. But Anglicans or other people like Pentecostal, they are afraid of committing it. Roman Catholic people. They are smart. And when some Roman Catholic parents find out that priesthood brings money and honor to family of one of our child must become a priest. And if you are a Roman Catholic uh, family, if, you have, if your own family have not produced a priest, you are losing. The only way to gain back what your parents have sown in Roman Catholic Church 
one of you becoming a priest or two, three. Wise families, Roman Catholic family, produce father, produce sister. You think it's only dragon like, oh, I have a near father, no father, or one near father. No. It's the money. You know how much father, reverend fathers make? But the, the village will contribute money or the town contribute and buy him a car. He don't need to work. They just ordination. The door of ordination, they, all of them will go. Cook food. Every, they, make, they make everything. And that's why they are torturing your parents. A small boy that you are older than will be giving penance to your parents. You win talk. You will say, okay. Okay, father. Oh, father. But when you come on Facebook, you start running your mouth at me. If if any reverend father still talk uh, or priest or pastor still control your parents and you come on Facebook running your mouth at me, you are a fool, a blind one at that. Why can't you co confront them? They forbid your parents from doing certain things they're supposed to do as people, even to their own people. They say, no, don't do it because of religion. You shut your mouth, but you come to Facebook, you begin to run your mouth against me or at me. Nonsense. That's why I call you a fool. How can you have enough sense? You go and kneel down before a statue, they call Mary, and you start praying. And you still, as at your, at your age, you went to university, or you went to secondary school, and you still praying to a statue because you believe. Then when I talk about our ancestors, you say, the idolaters, are you telling us to go back worshipping idols and all that? What are you worshipping? A Christian is an idol worshipper. A Muslim is an idol worshipper. Christians worship the cross or the, the, the wood. Muslims worship the stone. Where do you go to Mecca and Jerusalem? Because you are idol worshippers. You no Christian worship God in spirit. If you worship God in spirit, you wouldn't need Bible. You wouldn't need any church. You wouldn't need all these religious activities. You are idol worshippers. Your ancestors weren't idol worshippers. They were spiritual people. And natural people came and enslaved them. Because man is more powerful than any god. Man is more powerful than any deity. The real deity, the real god that exists is man. Wake up, my people. Wake up. Religion has no place in the society today. Time has gone. You still believe your Savior is coming on a horse. Wake up. We are now capable of scientific exploration. The more we rely on a magical fairy in the sky, the further behind we are going to be. Wake up, my people. How can you still be afraid that one God will come and punish you and send you into hell? Which hell? The God that cannot help you now. You believe we will send you to hell or to heaven. Let that God come and help you right now as we speak. He can't. Because he is man-made. Oh, it is. I always like to use it when I'm talking about God now. Why some people still dragging about capital G and capital e -A G and the small letter G? For God. The Bible is man controlling. Using Jesus of course. Every religious book. If you plan to be enjoying heaven. Why multitudes are tortured forever. Then you are as much a, a psychopath. As the God you worship. And I ask that question. Are you still that inhuman? Let's see the definition of inhuman. Uh, remember I'm talking about. No movement, no change. And I haven't gotten there yet. Okay? Inhuman. Oh. At least we have smartphone now, not carrying book to open dictionary. I used to do that. I used to study books with dictionary. No, I use my phone. Inhuman is lacking kindness, pity, or compassion. Inhuman is cruel. Or indifferent. You don't care. I don't care. You say I don't care. My phone finish. I don't care. My motor spoil. I don't care. I don't care. You don't care. Your ancestors were born in hell because they were idol worshippers. But you will go to heaven enjoying. 
you lack kindness, you lack compassion, you lack love, yet you are preaching love. Because what you are preaching as love is fake love, is religious love. Religious love love you so long you believe they are preaching, they are teaching. So long you don't expose their lies, they love you. But try to expose the lies they embrace as truth, brimstone. You're going to burn in hell. You will die. All those crap. Hey, you know, sometimes these days when I, I, I said, is it me? I'm no longer bothered about what people are saying. Religious people like saying, God will do this. God will kill you. Because the way these people think, uh, uh, talk, you will think like, man, maybe I will not drive today because what if I get an accident? They will think their God has done that. Excuse me? <laughs> so, the same way I, I defeated fear as, as a teenager, that's the same way I defeated the fear of whatever religion has to give or uh, have to threaten me with. Because as a child, I used to be um, afraid of dark. Especially when somebody die, I can't walk in the dark. I'm scared. I thought maybe the person will come and grab me. So, but as a teenager, I say, you know what? Let me close my eyes. I will walk through this darkness. Let, let that thing come and touch me. Nothing happened. And I learned it from somebody that said, if you want to quit cigarette, he said, light the cigarette, put it up by your side and said, if devil is one that makes me smoke, let devil come and put this cigarette in my mouth. That cigarette can move. And that's the same thing you're supposed to practice with your God or anything you fear, anyone you fear. If you believe your God exists, say, so okay, let God, that God come and do this. And you see he's inactive. He's inactive. He's silent. He's murmured. He's invisible. He cannot do anything. So I, when I, 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 I'm not afraid of whatever any religious person is saying. Let them threaten me. They say they want to kill, kill my parents. They want to do this to my... Even my, one of my siblings call me and say, Stop what you're saying. They're complaining or they're saying this. I don't want somebody to hurt somebody. I say, hey, and you are my brother. In my village where I came from, my mates, people that know me, they wouldn't, they wouldn't dare touch any of my siblings. They know that. They wouldn't they? Because they know I used to live a bad life. I used to be among the bad boys from that village. They know that. Lock up, I've been there. <laughs> what life are you telling me? Smoking, drinking, all that? I've done all that. Today I was playing uh, Madonna music at, at, at work. So it's about this uh, La Vita, you know. So I remember how we used to dance it, garbage. Ah, so the, the guy asked me, oh, so this is what you... I said, man, that's when I was clubbing. When Madonna comes on, man, that song is one of the songs that corrupted me. Oh, <laughs> especially when after smoking weed and you went to club. Ooh. I used to do all that. And some of them running out here against me. Some of them, they know me. That time, they wouldn't dare come. They can't stand where I stand. They can't go with people I go. I never be... I, uh, 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 my mess, we aren't my friends. It's people that are older than me. Because I have that glory, naturally. That when you see me, you will never treat me like I'm your mate. You will treat me like I'm greater and older than you. And some people think that. My father one day looked at me and said, see the, 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 the caliber of people that are coming to see me and I still don't have this. I say, you don't know me. I'm not seeking after those things. If I'm seeking money, after money, I'm telling, I will do everything they're supposed to do. I'm, I'm a living witness. I've done that. I say, I will never use the name of God or Jesus to rob people. Instead, I will use God and go and rob a bank. I know it's there and I make money. Or you enter politics, do dirty business as people do. Your prayer will never give you money. Pray all you want. Your qualification in a school, especially in Africa, will never give you. At least in America, they can help you. But in Africa, you want to be rich in Nigeria, like a place like Nigeria, you have to go to see politicians who are the one making money. Dirty people. You cannot be clean and make money. See the pastors. Every rich pastor is a criminal. Every rich politician is a criminal. Check them. It's not prayer that is giving them money. They are using lies to make money. And that's how you to make money. Money thrives on lies. Truth can never give you money. Because truth will empty the house. Who will give you thousand offering? 
Oh, bro, I would have wanted to hear you to the end, but don't have enough um, MB. So it's okay, my, my dear. I love it. It's, what, it's part of the thing we are suffering in Africa. We, we don't have MB to listen or to check anything. You, want, you can use Google. And that's one of the benefits that all these criminals in Africa are having. I mean, the, the politicians and the priests, uh, clergymen. Because the members are poor. The members cannot afford steady power supply. The members cannot afford uh, data, high-speed data or unlimited data to check, to research what they are hearing. So they tell you, don't mind those videos on, on, on Facebook. Don't mind those videos on YouTube. They're lying because they know you will not check it. It's okay, I believe you. But like me, I can listen to four-hour message straight. I've been doing that on my laptop. Sometimes I, I put it on, keep listening until I sleep. I wake up, it's still playing. You know, YouTube stuff. But in Africa, it's not possible. Because not that people don't have money to purchase it. It's not available. Even when it's available, it's not functioning as it's supposed to. And these are the same people that said, God is good to them. God has been wonderful to them. God has blessed them. Where is the blessing of God when you cannot be online in this time and age? Where is the blessing of God when you, can have, you cannot have power, power supply, steady power supply in this time and age? Where is the power of God when you are scared of mosquitoes to come and give you malaria? You put net in your house in America. See this though? It remains this way. No net. No net. No net anywhere. They have mosquitoes, but not as in Africa. Their mosquito can give you malaria. They treated that. Africa, when will you treat your own? No way. Traditionally, religiously, medically, you have not done that. This how uh, somebody begin to manufacture otapia. Apia, apia. You begin to sell it. Oh, five, five naira or ten, ten naira. And you make money. Maybe you buy a car. Boom. Or you use it, you, make, you raise some money and send your, your, your child or your brother or your, your relation abroad. Then they start working and send them money back home. Yeah, we are rich now. We're making money. Let us wake up. Our, my people. That God you worship does not exist. That God you fear does not exist. He cannot do you anything. And I like this one. <laughs> I titled this one, How Many God and Churches in Your Area? Because anywhere you see churches, that's where you see poverty. That's why Nigeria is the headquarter of poverty in the whole world. Because Nigeria have churches everywhere. At least I opened one <laughs> when I was there also. Because that's the way. And in America also, Nigerians are doing the same thing in America. They have churches everywhere also in America. But government of America... Put them down. You can't make noise in America in your church. You have to close your door to make that noise. They hear it? Okay. They come and give you warning. They give you ticket. <laughs> it's okay. We wouldn't do it. And they continue. They seal it. Get out. You don't disturb anyone. As you did in Nigeria, I see a poor person. He carry megaphone. Then they tell you, all the women that are wearing trousers, you are going to hell. You that are chewing chewing gum, you are going to burn in hell. Repent, come to Jesus. Because she stops having fun. Now she wants everybody to stop us. <laughs> I used to do all that, okay? I used to do that. <laughs> These people, they, they believe in one God, but lack oneness. How can you say you believe in one God? You are not united. You are against, you, you even have can. You have C, uh, C, is it, what is the uh, Christian uh, Pentecostal, CPM, right? Or whatever they call it. You have all these organizations, and yet you claim you have one God. Okay, you are against me that I don't believe in your God. But Muslims believe in God. So why are you against Muslims? And Muslims, why are you against Christians? Do both of you believe in God? If somebody that don't believe in God is hated by you, so why are you also hating people that believe in God? People that believe there is a God, you also hate them. 
Don't you see you are a moron doing all that? Huh? You believe in one God, but you don't have oneness among you. Hypocrites, gullible, operating church, op I mean, opening churches and religions everywhere without finding solution to their problems. If there is solution from any God or from any church or from any religion, Africans wouldn't have a problem today. See the problems in Africa, despite all the God. They say one God, all right? God of Christianity, Almighty God. Allah, Almighty God, Jehovah, Almighty God, Yahweh, Almighty God, and they are in Africa. Then why is Africa still poor? There is no one righteous man in Africa? You telling me there is no few righteous men in Africa that because of them God can use them and save Africa from the mess they are in today? Enough. Why are there over 30,000 Christian denominations and courts around today as opposed to just one? It's supposed to be one. Because according to John chapter 10 verse 16, Jesus said that there will be one fold and one shepherd. That is what Jesus said. You that say that Christianity mean, or Christian mean the followers of Christ, you are not following Christ when you have your own church, St. Mary, St. Augustine, St. all this nonsense, different places. Even Roman Catholic Church has started building churches. In my time, it used to be maybe uh, uh, St. Matthew was for people that uh, live in, in the upper area. Then in my village, we have um, St. Um, that's, I'm talking about like Roman Catholic, right? And let me talk Roman Catholic and Anglican. That's the major religions in our place. So we, they, we used to, okay, no, Roman Catholic. We used to have St. Matthew. St. Matthew is one of the biggest one, maybe the first one, right? They built. So then we, down to my place, we have St. Patrick, right? Also, they are big. Anywhere Roman Catholic goes, they are big because they know how to convert the pagans. They said, we are dissenting. We don't catch the Caesar. We don't catch the Just after worshipping us, you can worshipping our God. You can still go and do your idol something. That's why in my village, the head of masquerade man, I don't know if he's still the head, is a catechist in Roman Catholic Church. A masquerade goes Thanksgiving as St. Matthew, as I heard also. <laughs> So they believe in that. We don't catch naked, chineke, we don't catch that. Is that. Anglicans don't believe that. Anglicans say, reject everything, come on and follow Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Nonsense. Then in Achara, they have um, Holy Trinity. Right? But today, like in the upper area mainly, Ibubu still have, Ibubu, my village still have uh, St. Patrick alone. Unless they have just, they just built new one. And Achara also, or have only uh, Holy Trinity, right? But there yeah, now, Amanasa people they are started having their churches. Uh, uh, Akokwa also they build their church, you know, which a major, major, the man major is late now. Um, his son later become a Pentecostal, and he was my friend, a maker. That was through, through whom I got, I got uh, the, the woman I married back home then. Then he said they started having churches now. They open churches. Also, um, this man, one man who built a air conditioned church for Anglican church before it used to be only St. Thomas, but I don't know the name of that one. So you see that Christianity they keep splitting themselves, hating themselves, fighting among themselves. They go, they, they go to synod or whatever council they call it, they fight. This, uh, this, this, uh, this unity among them. And they believe. We believe in Christ Jesus. We believe in God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. They are one. So why are you not one? And Jesus himself said that there should be one fold and one shepherd, not branches. Not denominations. One fold and one shepherd. He said the answer why there are many denominations and the, and the Christ, Christian denominations and cult around today as opposed to just one is because the answer is quite simple, really. B believers in God or theists redefine the idea of God constantly to suit their individual need, wants, desires, personal requirements, and di um, dialectic and to justify to justify said belief or the said belief in the content 
in the context of the shifting paradigm of the society that they live in. As things change, they change also. You remember before, Roman Catholic people don't used to do crusade or doing all this uh, poster. Yeah, they used to mock people. Many of you don't know that today. Before, Roman Catholic people used to mock people, Pentecostal people, Undoka Akromaka. They used to mock Anglicans from Karen Bible. You, do you know there was time lay people, like members of Roman Catholic people, they never carry Bible, they never read the Bible. Yeah. It was the late Pope, Pope John Paul II, that lifted the ban, and they start using Bible, the Good News translation. And you see them everywhere now. You see Mbaka and the rest, they start having Holy Ghost priests. <laughs> Before they don't have Holy Ghost priests, all they had is Holy Mother priests. <laughs> Now they begin to have Holy Ghost priests that speak in tongues, perform miracles, magic. It's magic. They're performing magic, right? Like Fadambaka, you know, criminal. Fadede, you know, they, all of them, they connected to Roman Catholics. That's how they got many members like that. <laughs> because they know if they move, they will lose them. So they stay there. They're smart criminals, okay? <laughs> they know. They keep changing. Things change. They change also. Okay, now people opening churches. Okay, before they used to call Ndoka Warehouse. Today, they are building churches. They are building Ndoka Warehouse also. <laughs> so when you go at Adoration Ground, they learn it from Pentecostals. <laughs> when you see them make crusade or print posters, they learn it from Pentecostal. That's why we said Pentecostal churches make paint to be costly. Pentecostal. They make paint to be costly in Africa, in Nigeria, for example. So everybody is supposed to be making um, ambios posters now, making uh, going for crusade seminars. See, so that one is not is 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 not something Roman Catholic members can come and they argue with me. And do you know also before Roman Catholic churches used to on their signboard they used to write it Roman Catholic Church. They change it. They remove Roman. <laughs> They still answerable to the Pope and Robo, but they remove Roman because they see that people are bombarding them with that. Okay, it's Roman Catholic Church. It's not a church of God. Okay, they remove Roman Catholic. They put Catholic Church, St. Peter's Catholic Church. Why, why do you remove the Roman Catholic church, Roman from, the, from there? But it's a Roman church. It has nothing to do with any God. It has nothing to do with any Christ in the first place. It's Roman Catholic Church. All right? <laughs> So, if one denomination does not satisfy the, uh, this uh, criteria, the person can shop around to find one that's, that does. And if the person does not find anyone, the person can open his own, of course. When somebody starts hearing voices, he wants to see another pastor that is here dissenting or speak dissenting. If the person doesn't see it, he opens his own church. It's the, it's, that's, that's what happens. A priest begin, begin to hear voices as Abraham had in the Bible and the Roman Catholic Church don, does not contain that. He go and open his church. I think the priest that wanted to marry but they refused him. He left and marry and he have his own ministry, right? At least in Africa you make money when, when you open your ministry. Christians don't know the God, their God. Their God is called Constantine. The name of the God of Christianity is not Jehovah. It's not Yahweh. It's not any other God but Constantine. That is the real God of Christianity. And many Christians don't know that. My people, I want to ask you, stop wasting your time and life praying to imaginary beings, praying to God. No, get out and walk. Stop praying to imaginary beings. You have the will and the power to make your dreams or wish a reality. You have that power. No one can stop you. See all the fasting and prayers you did at the end of the year to enter 2019. Already people started doing fasting again this month. What happened to the one you did to cross over to 2019? You keep doing the same thing every year, every month, every week, and expecting different result that is crazy that is insanity wake up stop wasting your time and life in prayers the jesus you believe in never existed as a person it's a made up at uh, a made up something by some bishops 
It's a fictional character like in a movie. And you keep believing it. You pray into Jesus, whom you say is God. So God came himself to save you. And God prayed to himself. Can't you see it does not make sense? My people, I'm asking you to wake up. And there's another thing I want to share before I go to this uh, no movement, no change. Of course, no movement, no change. Right? I've been doing this thing when it comes to no movement, no change. This is where I get the inspiration to share this message about no movement, no change. Right? I've been doing so like when I have code, I used to um, put this cough drop. This is cough drop. Our back home, uh, like in Nigeria, they call it like tom tom right or hacks but in america here they call it a cough drop right so i used to lick it right so last night i put one in my mouth and lay down but i hope i hope like it will keep um dissolving and maybe clearing my decongestion or my throat like when i feel something is there but when I wake up, it just stay as I put it there. You know why it did not dissolve? Because there is no, there was no movement, no movement, no change. Little movement, little change. That is life. It's supposed to be in motion. There must be motion for something to change. No wonder the um, people call when they come up to do something. They call it a movement, right? Oh, what movement are you in? Like some people have been asking me on Facebook, what is your movement? I said, I don't have one. Movement one. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a, um, revolution, a revolutionary looking for people to follow me, for us to go and change them. No. I said, for me to do that, first I will fortify myself and my people. Because if we fortify ourselves, the bad people cannot penetrate. It's not one person fortifying himself and others are vulnerable. No. If others are vulnerable, they will use them to kill you, no matter how, you, how fortified you are. But if all of you are fortified, you have that same, that, that, that same, that's, that same um, will to achieve that thing. You, anyone that is coming to distract you from that is an enemy. So you won't let them in. But you see, because the, all the revolutionaries that have killed never done that, fortified themselves and the others. You see how they kill them. Sometimes they use their friends, they use their wife, they use somebody that is close to them to get them, arrest them or kill them. When they tell you in the Bible, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, so say that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Do you know the old things they tell you that are passed away? Truth and facts. So all things have become new. What are all those new things that become new? Faith and belief. They want you to let all things to pass away and embrace the new things they bring they brought to you. And that old thing. Is your ancestors. They tell you the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. All things shall pass away. That's how they make us to hate our ancestors, to not think about them. Say, remember not the former things. Excuse me. How can you live today without remembering the former things? It's the former things that give back to, to what is going on today. Without the former things, there will be no new things. But they say, no, forget the former things. I will do a new thing. Who will do a new thing? No God can do a new thing. You are the one that can do a new thing. You have to move. You want change? Move. A, a, a woman that wants to get married must move. If you remain the way you are, dressing the way you used to dress, dressing like in Mbeke, dressing like old woman while you are a teenager, while you are a young woman. Okay, come and get now. Let's see. <laughs> You want change in your life. Move. The best change you can ever have is changing your own life. The real change starts with you. 
If you have not changed, if you don't change and want things to change, it will never work. Even when you have all that, it's still pff, go down. You have to change. If you want that change, you have to move. No movement, no change. Try it. I don't know whether it happened only to me. Only, only to me. I put it, I lay down. It did not dissolve. I wake up. Mm. I went back again to bed. It's still there. I wake up in the morning. I have to crush it. I crush it with my teeth. <laughs> because I don't like when I want to drink water in the morning. You know, the, the mentor. The mentor in it will be, you know, like making it feel, feel like I'm drinking very cold water. All right? So no movement. No change. You have to wake up. Wake up from sleep and make that movement to make that um, cough drop or hax or, 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 or tum tum to dissolve. If you just put it in your mouth without movement, that's why when you put it, you know, there's movement going on and it starts dissolving. Because the, when you make movement, the saliva comes in, you know, so the thing will begin to dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. Then maybe the little one that remains, you crack it or sometimes you swallow it by mistake. It happens. But there is changes. And that change is for your own good. Don't embark on any change that is not for your own good. Don't join any movement that is not for your own good. Especially when movement is against any people, don't join it. Don't join any movement that's against a people. Join the movement that is for people. For change, for good, for good of the people. Don't join movement because maybe it's uh, somebody from your place or somebody you know or somebody you like. No, no, their their modus operandi, no, their 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 intentions, no everything. So that when somebody asks you why do you join that group, you will boldly answer. You don't say, "Come and listen to my leader." And you will know. No, you're supposed to know. Don't be a blind follower. You're supposed to know. If you want to change the status quo, you have to make a move. You have to make a move. You can't change the status quo by keeping silent. And that's what I'm doing. I'm making this move. Calling us to wake up. But it's not a movement. That you, oh, come and join me, come and register, come and, oh, we are going, you know. And calling us to wake up. Let us wake up as a people, especially we Africans. We're supposed to wake up, fix ourselves. The main people that are waking up are Africans in abroad. How about Africans in Africa? Some are waking up, but I mean, in greater number. People, are, Africans are waking up in America in Europe, in Asia. And the Africans in Africa think it's because they are there. No, it's not. There are also some Africans that are waking up, but they have been suppressed also. Because if they join the uh, establishment, all those movements, all those uh, um, uh, poli politi um, political uh, parties, they will corrupt them. And because you don't join them, nobody will hear your voice. But it will not last forever. Because things are changing. Some people that have phone today did not have it some years ago. But today they have it. They can browse. They can come online. Little by little. Remember, we are not rushing it. We are not rushing it. Because we are, we are spreading the knowledge of the truth. We are not trying to build a religion. We are not trying to build a, a, a movement for selfish reasons. No. We are trying to wake up our people that as a people, we will rise up. Those old things that belong to us that say we should forget, we will recover them. Our power and our heritage, we will recover them. We have to make that move. Move for the truth. Move against lies. Move for facts. Move against fictions. Move for knowledge. 
move against belief. You believe because you don't know. You have faith because you lack knowledge. But when you know, you know. You don't have to believe. And that's what I'm calling you to do. I'm calling you to know the truth. Because it is the knowledge of the truth that will set you free. You may say you are not in bondage. You are. As a Christian, you are living in bondage. As a Muslim, you are living in bondage. As a Jew, you are li living in bondage. As a Hebrew, uh, Hebrew, you are living in bondage. Whatever religion you belong to, you are living in bondage. You are living in, your life itself is a pattern of bondage because you can't do what you want to do. You still dress up to go somewhere because religion taught you to do, I mean commanded you to do so. I don't do that nonsense anymore. I am free indeed. I don't give my money for any to any god. I don't give my money for any religious activity or whatever they call it, whether given to the poor or anything. I'm not. If they care for the poor, they will stop that thing that makes them poor. They don't really care about the poor. They care about their religion. You see, we are giving to the poor. No, nonsense. Who created the poor? Who made those people poor? We're supposed to fix our family. That's part of this waking up. Because family, when family is messed up, the whole people are messed up. But when family is fixed, that's when you see people begin to unite. I'm calling us to wake up. No movement, no change. If there is movement, there will be change. So you have to get up and move. I can sit here and say all I want. But if I want something to happen, I have to get up and do it. Okay? Even the TV, if I want to put it on, I have the remote control. I can't stay here, I'm talking to the TV, and the TV will get you know, have. There must be a movement. I have to pick up the remote. And the pick and put it on. No movement. No change. In your life, you have to move also. It's not a new year message. It's not a new month message. It's not a new week message. It's not a new day message. No, it's a new you message. You want a new you or you need a new you. You have to make change. You have to make a move. I mean, you have to move. If you want a new you, you have to move. You can do it. Anybody that tell you you cannot move is a lie. If they block you, then find another way. There's always a way out. There's always another way. There's no one way. That's why they lie to you. They say Jesus is the only way to where to where. Only way to quit God. God is imaginary. Jesus is fictional. How can Jesus be the only way to God? When you say God made all of us. <laughs> Let us wake up, my people. This is what I want to share with us. Let us know that our life is more important than whatever is going on in the world. And whatever is going on in the world, we have the will and the power to change it. If we need that change, we have to move. Like those of us that are crying for Biafra, we are not crying against anyone. We are not crying to kill anyone. All we are crying is for freedom. It's not for fame. It's not for anything but for freedom of a people. So that those killings will stop. So that those marginalizations will stop. All those evil going out against some people will stop. So that people will begin to live as they're supposed to live. But whether we have it or not, you have the will and the power to make a move that will bring positive change in your life. Do not move against people. Move against evil. Move against falsehood. Move against religion. Move against lies. Don't move against your fellow human being. Make a positive move and enjoy positive change in your life. I love you all and this is what I want to share with you. Continue in doing good and as we go on I will keep hearing from you for good things that is happening in your life and around you.
Thank you. Peace.